have a bunch of tools at the bottom of the page that currently do not work um, fuzzy logic and uh, neural networks and what we decided to do is take this ECG game and make a, essentially an algorithm a bot that will play this game so I explained it before happy to explain it again but let's just dive into coding and then we can uh, you know zoom out if uh, needed so we have this uh, html it has some uh, explanation at the bottom currently just explaining how to play the game it about this html the code is for a web page titled cardio quest ecg waveform scoring game it's structured to provide an interactive game experience focused on identifying abnormal ecg patterns now we also have this python code and two javascripts so we'll get there well how about actually we'll do the waveform first because we we're not changing it today so this is waveform js the waveforms js script is designed for generating electrocardiogram ecg waveforms both normal and abnormal to be used in your cardio quest ecg scoring game here's a breakdown of its key functionalities initial setup it creates an array t values representing time points and defines parameters like mu sigma and amplitude for waveforms Gaussian function utilizes a Gaussian function to model the R wave, a critical component of the QRS complex in ECGs. Waveform generation generate full waveform function produces a complete ECG waveform with optional variations for the QRS complex. It includes the P wave, QRS complex, modifiable, S wave, and T wave. The waveform is adjusted vertically on the canvas 300. Now we also have this game logic. The game underscore logic. JS script is the core of your CardioQuest ECG waveform scoring game. It's well structured and integrates several key functionalities. Canvas setup initializes the canvas for drawing waveforms and sets colors and fonts. Game variables manages score, game speed, waveform data, and X coordinate for waveform scrolling. Draw waveform draws the ECG waveform on the canvas. Draw score displays the player's score. Clear canvas clears the canvas for redrawing. Draw counters, displays hits, false alarms, correct rejections, and misses. Click handling, detects clicks on the canvas and updates the score based on the type of waveform clicked. Scoring logic, manages scoring with hits, false alarms, correct rejections, and misses. Scrolls the current waveform across the canvas. Generates a new waveform once the current one scrolls off. Waveform analysis. Sends waveform data to a back-end server for analysis. Displays analysis results on the web page. Game loop, a continuous loop that updates the game state including drawing the waveform, updating okay, okay, scores, okay, okay. and managing. Okay, can we focus on the fuzzy logic design? I'll uh, share the last piece of code, which is the Python Flask application. And then uh, we will go from there. A current problem is that the features of the fuzzy algorithm are not displayed on the front page your python flask application integrates fuzzy logic for analyzing ecg waveforms it's a crucial part of your system processing the waveform data and applying fuzzy logic to classify the waveforms as normal or abnormal let's address the issue of fuzzy algorithm features not being displayed on the front page data flow the application receives waveform data processes it applies fuzzy logic and sends back the analysis results the front end then should display these results fuzzy logic setup You've defined antecedents, input variables, for frequency, amplitude, and peaks, and a consequent, output variable, for abnormality. Membership functions and rules are well set up. Data processing, the app calculates dominant frequency, peak count, and amplitude from the waveform data, normalizes these values, and feeds them into the fuzzy logic system. Result generation, the fuzzy logic system computes the abnormality level and membership values for each input feature. Front-end integration, ensure that the front-end, your JavaScript code, correctly handles the JSON response from the Flask app. The response includes the fuzzy logic analysis result and the membership values. Troubleshooting display issue. Check if the response from the Flask app is correctly structured and includes all necessary data. In your JavaScript, ensure that the display analysis result function correctly accesses and displays the response data. Verify that the HTML elements, like raw frequency, normalized frequency, etc., are correctly named and can be accessed by the JavaScript. We have this error. Let's see if it's able to fix it. The error message you're encountering, float, argument must be a string or a real number, not state per simulation, suggests that there is a problem with the way the membership values are being extracted and converted to floats in the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function of your Flask application. 
This issue likely arises from these lines. The membership underscore value property is not a straightforward numerical value, but a state per simulation object in the context of a control system simulation. To resolve this, you should access the membership values after the compute method is called, using the input method of the control system simulation object. This adjustment should correctly convert the fuzzy set membership values into floats and resolve the error. That's a different error. But why these numbers are not uh, displayed on the front panel? This object is not subscriptable. So there are values in the terminal, but they are not shown on the front page. And I'm getting this. The error message 127.0.0.1, the 1st of February 2024, 14 hours 15 minutes and 29 seconds, post, analyze underscore waveform HTTP, 1.1, 500 indicates that your Flask server is hitting a server-side error when handling the post request to, analyze un Since you mentioned that there are values in the terminal, but they are not shown on the front page, it seems the server is successfully processing the data, but something goes wrong afterward, possibly in the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function or when forming the response. This issue is causing the server to return a 500 internal server error. Detailed error logging. Add more detailed logging in your Flask app, especially in the analyze underscore waveform function and the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function, to capture the exact point of failure. Check fuzzy logic analysis. Ensure that all operations within the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function are correctly handling the data. Pay special attention to any operations that could potentially raise exceptions. I'm thinking we changed the fuzzy logic analysis to make the numbers correct, but the analyze waveform haven't changed. Consistency in data types and formats. Check if the data types and formats expected by the new analysis logic match those produced by analyze underscore waveform. Any mismatch can lead to errors. Testing with new logic. After updating analyze underscore waveform, test it thoroughly with various inputs to ensure it's working as expected with the new analysis logic. Okay, okay. Yeah, after we changed that, also had to change uh, analyze waveform. The analyze underscore waveform route in your Flask app looks well structured for handling waveform data analysis using fuzzy logic. Let's address the error that was occurring in your fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function. Receive and process data. The function successfully receives waveform data from the post request and processes it. Fuzzy logic analysis. You call fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis with the process data. Ensure that the function correctly computes the fuzzy logic results and retrieves the membership values as discussed in the previous message. Response creation. The function prepares a JSON response containing the analysis result and the membership values for frequency, amplitude, and peaks. It also includes the processed data. Yes, the message. It's come from fuzzy logic uh, analysis. And normality analysis input. Didn't know you can actually click <laughs> on the responses that will go where you needed to go. Trying to access the abnormality analysis. As if it were, were a dictionary, but it's not. The input option is an instance uh, of the input acceptor class, which does not support item assignment. Use the view method instead. And another error is similar. Could be a different problem where the values are just not displayed. That doesn't look correct. Yeah, let's continue with GPT-4 instead. Can you regenerate the whole function? Sure. I can help you regenerate the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function with the necessary adjustments. The revised function will process the data using fuzzy logic and correctly extract the membership values. In this revised version, the key change is in how the membership values are extracted after the compute method. Note that compute underscore membership underscore value is a pseudo method. You need to replace it with the actual method used in your fuzzy logic library, like scikit fuzzy, to extract the membership values correctly. The rest of the function remains similar to your original design, defining fuzzy variables, setting up membership functions, creating rules, and computing. Well, that's good to know. That they compute, compute membership value. In this revised version, the key changes in how the membership values are extracted after the compute method. Note that compute underscore membership underscore value is a pseudo method. You need to replace it with the actual method used in your fuzzy logic library, like scikit fuzzy, to extract the membership values correctly. The rest of the function remains similar to your original design, defining fuzzy variables, setting up membership functions, creating rules, and computing the fuzzy logic result. Where's this compute a membership function value pseudo pseudo method? What does it actually mean? You're correct that the compute underscore membership underscore value is not an actual method in the scikit fuzzy library. 
My apologies for the confusion. In scikit-fuzzy, you typically compute the fuzzy membership values before running the control system simulation. Here's how you can adjust the function to extract membership values correctly. In this version, the fuzz interp underscore membership function is used to calculate the degree of membership of each input value in each fuzzy set. This function is part of the scikit-fuzzy library and is the correct method to obtain the membership values. So fuzz interp is a legit method for scaling different errors. Getting this error like can explain. The error object of type in 64 is not JSON serializable suggests that there's an issue with converting NumPy data types, like in 64, to JSON format. In Python, JSON serialization works seamlessly with native Python data types, but not always with NumPy data types. Here's how you can fix this issue. Convert NumPy types to native Python types. Before returning the data in the JSON response, convert any NumPy data types to native Python types. This can be done using Python's native type functions like int and float. Apply the conversion in your fuzzy logic analysis function. You'll need to apply this conversion in the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function, particularly where the membership values are calculated. Here is the adjusted part of your fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function. In this updated code, I've wrapped the results of fuzz, interp underscore membership with float, which will convert the numpy float 64 or in 64 types into native Python float or in types that are JSON serializable. This should resolve the serialization error you're encountering. Yeah, how about this one? <laughs> Keep getting errors. The error message you're seeing, crisp output cannot be calculated, likely because the system is too sparse, suggests that the fuzzy logic rules you've set up in your system are not being activated by the input values. This typically happens when the input values do not sufficiently overlap with the defined membership functions, meaning no rules are triggered, and the system cannot produce a crisp output. Here are some steps to troubleshoot and resolve this issue. Review membership functions. Ensure that the membership functions for frequency, amplitude, and peaks cover the entire range of possible input values. If there are gaps in the coverage, it's possible for inputs to fall into these gaps, leading to no rules being activated. Adjust membership functions. If your inputs are often 0 or 1, as in your process data, make sure your membership functions account for these values. For instance, you might need to adjust the triangles or add new membership functions to cover these extremes. Check rules logic. Review the logic of your fuzzy rules. Ensure that they are logically consistent with the membership functions and can be triggered by the range of input values you expect. Input range normalization. Verify that the normalization of input values is correctly done. If the normalized values don't align well with your defined membership functions, this could lead to the issue you're facing. Default output handling. Implement a mechanism to handle cases where no rules are fired. This could be a default output or a message indicating that the input values did not trigger any rules. Debugging. Temporarily add more print statements in your Flask app to display the normalized input values and the degree of membership in each category right before the compute method is called. This can help you understand how the inputs are interacting with the membership functions. Certainly, let's focus on addressing why the raw and normalized values aren't being displayed on the front end. This issue typically involves ensuring the data is being correctly passed from the back end to the front end and then properly rendered in your HTML. Here are steps to troubleshoot and resolve this. Check JSON response from back end. Ensure that your Flask back end is correctly including the raw and normalized values in the JSON response. Use print statements in the Flask app to confirm that the data is being structured correctly before it's sent. Examine front end JavaScript code. In your front end JavaScript, Ensure that the function responsible for handling the response, display analysis result or similar, is correctly parsing the JSON and extracting the values. Again, use console logs to debug. HTML element ids. Verify that the IDs in your HTML match those used in your JavaScript. For instance, if you're trying to display the values in elements with IDs like raw frequency, ensure these IDs are exactly the same in both your HTML and JavaScript. So just do a quick recap. We have this game. You can access it on the site on bionicios.com for free. You can play it. It's uh, teaching you how to process uh, ECG data, how to review ECG data. Still getting errors. Let's close this for a sec. So when you start the game, your score is zero. If you click on normal EG, it gives you a false alarm. And the task is to find abnormal EG, uh, EG waveforms. So this one is normal, it gave me a correct rejection. This is normal again. I expect another correct rejection. My score is 10. Normal again, correct rejection, score will be 20. I don't know why, but there is a normal again. So I don't have to do anything. This is abnormal, it's missing a bit in the beginning. So I clicked on it, got one hit. So the idea is you have to keep increasing the greens and reducing or not increasing the reds so you need more hits correct rejections this is obviously abnormal so i'm clicking on it getting a hit 
every time you get plus uh, 100 points it becomes faster just to give you a uh, more of a challenge uh, this looks normal anyway what we're doing now is trying to replace me playing the game with a bot with a, a machine learning algorithm a simple one at this stage it's normal and here at the bottom of the page we see the um, features that we're looking at we're looking at frequency peaks let's see if the peaks are even working okay don't think they right so they are changing that's good yeah we don't want to normalize the number of peaks the peaks should be okay okay so we're still working it's work in progress um I don't know why the frequency is always zero should not be zero we'll check this in a sec the frequency seem to be always zero how do we fix that in the code i need an actual code specific to what uh, to the code i shared with you before also the number of peaks if we're assuming that um, the number of peaks peaks not peaks so if we are assuming that a specific ECG should have a certain number of positive and negative peaks should have three positive peaks and uh, one negative then we don't have to normalize these numbers as well so we need to adjust the code accordingly understood let's address these issues quickly review frequency calculation you're using the fft fast fourier transform to determine the dominant frequency the np.abs frequencies argmax approach finds the index of the maximum value which may not be the correct way to find the dominant frequency you should calculate the frequency from the index python copy code hash assuming your sampling rate is defined e.g samples per second sampling underscore rate equals hash define this based on your data frequencies equals np.fft fft for q len np underscore data d equals one sampling underscore rate dominant underscore frequency underscore index equals np dot abs np dot fft dot fft np underscore data argmax dominant underscore okay, frequency okay, okay. equals abs frequencies dominant okay. underscore frequency underscore index let's say okay it should check for zero data okay ensure your okay. input data okay. waveform underscore no, data is not a flat line clear well clear works so i'm using copilot uh, github copilot yes uh, it can so it's better at coding obviously which one is better to use for this project github copilot or chat gpt for coding chat 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 gpt anyway they both can do the task but choosing uh, between github copilot and gpt like chat gpt for coding in your project depends on your specific needs and the context of your work github copilot asterisk integration okay okay, okay. just uh, do it quietly integrate yeah obviously integration is better context aware yeah so that's not uh, quite clear language support yeah no, both of them support the same language a uh, gpt can hold more context that's for sure so this page will hold the context for the whole conversation bye